Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Blade Runner Enhanced Edition on the Nintendo Switch. A classic adventure experience from 1997, how is this port work and is it worth your time in 2022? Well hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Story then and here, we're taking on the role of Ray McCoy, and like the movie following Deckard, instead of a Blade Runner out of retirement, you are a rookie, and this story, it's set in parallel to that told in the movie, which I actually found really unique. The year though, 2019, and here under the instruction of Lieutenant Gusser, we are on the case of an animal murder at a local store that promises its clientele real animals, not those of the replicant variety. This attack on the store though, that is just the beginning, it spirals and becomes just a small part of a much larger narrative, and that surrounds replicants that have escaped to Earth and now they are on the hunt for DNA code that can extend their limited life cycle. This is my first time with the game, I never did get to play it back in the day, but it's incredibly well realised, telling a story that complements the movie and the novel. It's just basically gritty in all of the right ways. The opening in particular, it kind of sets the scene of what to expect. The creep owner of the animal store and his interaction with a young girl he employs. And yeah, the world is just delivering on the tone that we do expect. Along this journey though, expect to not only visit recognisable locations from the movie, including characters, but get introduced to new ones along the way. The story, it's naturally given the genre consistent throughout, but it's also accompanied with pre-rendered cutscenes that are particularly impressive, and actually perhaps most impressively, the experience can change every time you play. What I mean there as well then by the experience can change each time, that is because the locations are characters and when they appear that can be different, which characters are replicants and which are not, and then to my understanding it actually packs 12 different endings, which for its time it must have been absolutely mind blowing. I even read in fact online of a secret 13th ending, though I'm unsure of the credibility of the source surrounding that one. Best character award in this game as well, easily it goes to Maggie, your precious dog. Gameplay then and what we get here, it's a relatively traditional point and click adventure, though it does pack what it touts as real time events. These revolve around gunplay and it's really nothing more than a reticle appearing on screen instead of your cursor, so yeah you need to point at an object and interact to fire. The game though it has three difficulty options and from what I can tell this is basically what it impacts, how difficult are your enemies to basically take down. Now the controls they are naturally simple but most importantly moving that cursor on screen it works really well, always a concern when it comes to you know joystick controls. On the main menu then you'll even find sensitivity options as well as movement smoothing. If you are curious as well, this one it does not pack any sort of touchscreen functionality. While the game really lacks in any sort of tutorial around the controls, a breakdown definitely would have been handy honestly, it just doesn't take long to pick it up because there's not all that much to it. You tap A for movement, you double tap for sprint, you tap B to pull your gun out or holster it, and then the minus button, that's going to lead you to a database of all of the individuals met, evidence gathered, and your progression. You can also change ammo type, though I never really felt a need to do this, no doubt that will probably be cool called for on the hard setting. Heading from location to location though, unlike many in the genre, it puts no focus on solving puzzles, rather here it's instead asking you to investigate for clues and then question witnesses. You often get multiple lines of questions which can impact as well how a character behaves around you. You can even choose your personality type when you load up a game, so you can basically be the nice guy, the ass, or a variety of others. Quickly with the game though I realised that this is one of those ones where you need to consistently ask questions. Just because the dialogue tree is gone it doesn't mean that there's not more here to unpack. Likewise, sometimes characters won't be where you expect them to be, you'll need to basically transition from screen to screen. I actually realised this when I got stuck, I pulled up a playthrough on YouTube and they were where I expected in their run but not in mine. I exited the location a few times and before I knew it they had appeared. 
Then there's a few things in here that really impressed your spinner or flying car. It's at every location, and as you do make progression, you'll get access to a map to travel to a variety of locations. I appreciated the trust it put into the player. You know, it never forced you to go somewhere. It was always your choice. That's something we don't really see all of that much of in games in 2022. It's so often now full of hand-holding. My two favorite elements of gameplay though, that's gonna be the fight comp, your replicant detector test, as well as Esper photo analysis. The fight comp, it gives a display and you will ask a series of what it's called easy, medium, and intense questions to generate an emotional response. And then it's gonna deliver a verdict on your suspect. Basically, are they human or are they a replicant? Then the Esper, it's basically gathering images and stills from let's say surveillance that you collect and you can zoom in on specific areas of the image with a simple drag functionality. I love this photo functionality because it feels so true to the source. It's essentially converting that image into a 3D presentation that you can now zoom into and rotate. This, it's all conducted via what's known as the Kia or Knowledge Integration Assistant. It's a database of all your findings that you can interact with from the police precinct. The real-time portion of the gameplay, then probably the weakest, as I said, it's definitely a unique addition for the genre, but it did understandably feel pretty weak, you know, it can also lead to some pretty swift deaths if you do mess up, throwing you back to a previous point. This caused some particular confusion for me because there's really no checklist of what you need to be doing next, so you're kind of left trying to figure it out of, you know, where in the story did it place you. My advice here, use the save functionality frequently, especially as you head into the last third or so of the experience, where this becomes a more common occurrence. Likewise, sometimes the image can be so zoomed out, especially in handout, that it can be common to simply move around the screen until the cursor turns green, because you can't quite make out what's in the environment. It's not a problem, but it does become kind of a game in a few locations of simply hoping for the best. Overall, although I grew up on this genre, my favorite being Grim Fandango, but this is a gem of an entry, and I'm happy I finally got to experience it. You know, licensed games are so rarely good as well, so I can really see why this is considered a gem. That then, and with multiple endings and characters that change, I now have plenty of reason to jump back in and see how that next experience works out for me. That really makes it feel unique within the genre. Graphics and unnaturally, it's showing its age, released in 1997, but at that time it was absolutely ahead of its time. Now obviously, look, not quite as much nowadays, but you've got to respect everything they achieved here. You've got 70 motion captured characters, 3D styled leads made out against more traditional backgrounds, advanced lighting techniques, animated locations, pre-rendered cutscenes. The thing that impressed the most as well are the camera work as you move around locations. This is not a cut from static camera to static camera, but rather it kicks into a cinematic transition that really elevates that production quality. It's also then presented in the original format with borders on the left and the right of the screen. In relation to the upgrade then, we've seen a frame rate increase for the cinematic videos. We had a resolution bump of course. There's gonna be an included redesigned UI and then we've seen some texture filter as well. The only thing I will say there is I would have loved to have been able to jump to the original build as well, but it is the enhanced edition here or basically nothing. More pressing problems in the HD bump, it's absolutely appreciated, but with some of that filtering, we have lost some detail, the groundwork, the flooring, the textures. They often now present a smooth look from, let's say, what would have been seen in the original PC build. That is definitely a shame. Also, I had a couple of visual glitches, animations played out that shouldn't occur, and then a couple of characters, at times, they couldn't quite keep up with the, you know, the camera animation, that cinematic sweep. Finally, I did use a subtitles, which can be seen in the footage today. Again, it states these have been enhanced, but be aware these are not present during the cinematic cutscenes. Audio, finally, it's packing a fantastic score. Now, my understanding is it's not the original composer, so you will notice some variants here, but it's about as close as you can get, and honestly, I think it's just as impressive as the incredible movie score. It's about as atmospheric as they come, and it's supported them by a nice backbone of environmental effects to really add kind of that extra layer of immersion. 
The real highlight for me though, the voice acting, and look sure there's a couple of weak performances, but 95% of this is top quality, builds the emotion, there's a huge amount of dialogue that is consistent throughout, all fully voice acted, and we even see then a few recurring characters from the movie directly, which is just another nice way it ties its narrative into the universe. So overall, honestly, you've got to know what you're getting into here. It's a traditional point and click solutions. It's rarely going to tell you what you need to do. Often that solution as well, it can be a little bit, let's say, obscure. There's no hand holding in any way. And finally, very much showing its age. For me though, it's a narrative that absolutely wins and I love the genre, so it's very much tailored to my personality. That said though, when you see today's score, you need to factor that in because this one, it definitely won't be for everyone. If you have made it this far into the video though, I'm gonna guess you played it before, you like the novel or the movie, or you simply enjoy the genre. If that is the case, I absolutely recommend you go ahead and check it out. It does have issues though, gunplay is dull, or the new upscale it loses some of the detail. And one thing I didn't mention this far, there is a missed opportunity here. They could have done some sort of museum or history around the game, maybe different borders for the left and right of the screen if I'm being extremely picky. That said though, I spent 9 hours in this world, I'm ready to jump back in and at such a budget price point, I really do not think you can complain. So with that in mind, like a great 8 out of 10 from me, it's not the best in the genre, but it's definitely somewhere up there. It's a genre as well that absolutely needs a resurgence, it's more than deserved and it is for sure time. If you want another good maybe throwback, check out a game called Primordia on the Switch, that's a bit of a gem in itself with an out there sci-fi tone as well. Will you be adding this one to the library then or are you holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone. <laughs>